Hello, Christabel. Welcome to my channel. It's nice having you here with us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm just feeling so blessed to get to connect with you. Oh, uh, it's awesome. It's nice to have you. And I'm sure like everyone else, I'll, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing your testimony. You know, what happened to you and how you got delivered from it. So can you share your testimony with us, please? Yes, absolutely. So let me just start by saying literally every moment of my life has been by the grace of God. Like I, I would not be here if it wasn't for his grace. I would not be, I would have no joy <laughs> and he has delivered me and walked with me from the moment that I was born I, before that, I guess, you know, yeah. forever. and, um, you know, my full, you know, all of us, we have a long story, I'm sure, but, um, probably like one of the biggest things in my life that has impacted me was having a traumatic brain injury mm -hmm. when I was younger. Um, in my early teen years, I suffered a traumatic brain injury. It actually happened playing the game Red Rover at my church's youth group. Mm. So it's a running game. Yeah. And it, when, when it was my turn to run, all the boys on my team ran behind me and rushed the other team. And I hit my head on the cement wall. Oh, my dear. head bounced off the floor mm. and I lost consciousness. Mm. And basically to make a long story short, I had pressure swelling in my brain. Wow. So I seemed like fine that night, but a couple of days later, my brain had swelled so much that I couldn't walk straight. I had blurry vision. I couldn't hold conversations. I was functioning like a small child. I had to relearn how to get dressed, how to take a shower. Um, my short-term memory was really impacted and mm -hmm. it you know, I'd, I'd forget that I ate breakfast. I'd eat multiple bowls of cereal in the morning because <laughs> wow. I would literally forget that I ate and my brain wasn't talking to my body, right? Mm. I was slurring my speech, the right side of my body, all the muscles atrophied, which means they got smaller and weaker. And, you know, it, it, it's been a journey. So it's been over 10 years since that happened. And, whew, Gosh, I've had a lot of re-injuries, re-concussions along the journey, and there are still things that I live with to this day, but I will say that God has healed me beyond anybody's expectations. The doctors thought that I'd be never finished school, dependent on my parents the rest of my life, and, and have a disability that I just wouldn't be able to do anything, and the Lord has brought me mm. <laughs> so far. I can speak mm. clearly most of the time. When I get tired, my words all slur together. If I have a migraine, I lose my speech. Really? But mm -hmm, yeah, and that still happens. But most of the time, you know, the Lord has. It's it's just been a really long journey, and I went through years of rehabilitation therapies. And the thing about brain injury is it's invisible. So you can't see yeah. it on the outside. Mm -hmm. So while it, it was all happening, I looked fine, so to say, mm. but my behavior was like a small child when I was really? 15, having to relearn so many different things. Like I had a little sister who was four when the brain injury happened. I was 14. Yeah, and okay. she was teaching me stuff. Mm. So like we would watch Sesame Street together, equally entertained. Like she would, you know, teach me how to color in the lines and play board games. And oh. it was like, she was a big sister to me. That's oh. where I was mentally, mm. like below a four-year-old. And the Lord has walked me through all of it. And through that, he started to give me music and songs. I never wrote a song before the brain injury. And I started, I couldn't hold conversations at like the dinner table, but I started to write songs about deep spiritual songs about the Lord and my struggles. And they rhymed and made sense, which the doctor was like, 
well, music affects the brain differently. So kind of just go with it. And I started writing hundreds of songs and I really never expected to ever be able to do anything independently. Mm. And by God's grace, I now am a singer songwriter. I sing songs about where God's brought me through and, and worship songs and I do speaking. I yeah. tour across the U S and I do keynote speaking at conferences. I speak at medical conferences about brain injuries Really, wow. and yeah. And doing speaking for brain injury groups. And mm-hmm. I have something called hope after head injury, brain injury support online. And so how long, how long did it's it take a lot of things, but how long did it take you to recover then fully? You know, I am not still fully recovered. I don't have a driver's license. Right. I can't because while I might be able to hold it together, okay, like one on one or or in a conversation, I I'm not I I'm not good at anything coming at me, multitasking. I am very like singularly focused. And when I had my learner's permit, it did not go well. The doctors didn't want me driving because it was dangerous. I, I just didn't have the, I don't have the mental space to do that. Mm-hmm. And I still get migraines. And my most recent reconcussion was this past December. So it's just been a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, setbacks. But mm-hmm. I will say with every setback, I get closer to God. Yeah. With every setback, my dependence on him grows and I know that he is with me. So yeah. Mm. That's so much to take on board. Were you a Christian at that time when you had this brain injury? Yes, I was raised knowing God. So I have my parents to thank for that. I've always known God loved me and had a plan for me. And I think that's what helps sustain me and and our family through all of that, because the church did not support us after it happened. Um, Yeah. They did not support you? No, it's kind of sad. I mean, I don't want to, I've, I've gone past that. We've forgiven them, you know, it's, but at the time there was a change in leadership right before it happened. The pastor I had grown up with, actually just left to be an army chaplain if I remember correctly um, in Iraq and we had a temporary leadership situation that later well basically he caused a lot of issues and one of them was they wrote a letter to the whole congregation telling them to have no contact with my family for legal reasons because they're they got their attorneys to call my family. Oh no. And because there was no strong leadership at the time, my parents had been members of that church for over 15 years. Like mm-hmm. my mom ran their Sunday school. My dad, you know, changed the light bulbs on Christmas Eve. Like that's yeah. how involved my family was. And it was heartbreaking. Yeah. It was, it was heartbreaking. And, you know, I don't remember the whole first year and a half after the brain injury my because my brain was just not functioning yeah but it was definitely a a journey my mom says she had to keep telling herself my my church is not my faith my faith is not my church yeah and you know it's really been the lord and of course i have a church family now you know we you know thank thank the lord but it's been a long journey of realizing Mm. that god has been with us yeah you know so your parents were going through you just having an accident and at the same time losing a church family at the same time yeah all their friends that they had had and so how did your faith help you through that time uh, everything so i guess i got on that tangent because i did always grow up knowing that god loved me and um if i hadn't have had that foundation I don't think I'd be anywhere close to where I am now because the whole time I was looking to the word of God. And so I actually, my right side was atrophying 
I lost my handwriting, my ability to write well. Mm -hmm. It was like, it looked like a second grader wrote it. Really? Oh. And yeah, and I started writing out Bible verses, copying them out like over and over again, practicing mm -hmm. my handwriting, but also just like because I needed that. And I taped them all up over my walls and just I had to have something. And I knew that through all of this there that God was there and even if yeah. it didn't make sense and I didn't know what was happening that God was with me and that mm -hmm. has carried me through the years and there's been darker seasons there's been tough seasons but it has been a testament of learning how to depend on God because when I can't depend on my own brain this was one of the first things that I learned. This is maybe three or four years after the brain injury when I started to be able to reason. I had frontal lobe damage, which is your mm -hmm. control center for emotions and reasoning. Yeah. So it was about three or four years afterwards that I was actually able to reason again. And one of the yeah. first things that I remember is I thought to myself, I feel like my brain is betraying me. Like I want to remember something and I can't. And I want to do this and I can't, and I don't want to freak out and have a temper tantrum and cry, but I can't control it. Yeah. And I started to become aware. And I decided that if I could be dependent on the Holy Spirit, and if I could be dependent on God, he could be in my brain yeah. and he could be my memory. Yeah. And when I couldn't rely on myself, on my mind, mm -hmm. I couldn't rely on my brain. I could rely on him. On God. Yeah. Truth. Yeah, and that was one of the biggest turning points. Mm. Mm. And that's what God wants, isn't it? He wants us to rely solely on him. Yeah. Because without him, what can we do? We can't do anything, really. Yeah. You know? So because depending on ourselves, we only lead to, you know, frustrations, you know, anxiety, stress, you know, fear and all of that especially now you know we are living in times we've never had before yes and lots of people are feeling you know the anxiety the anxiety level is so high people are scared and all of that so what i'm trying to do through my channel really is to spread god's love and to make people know that even in this you know god's hand is still with us he hasn't left us you know so my, the, the, the role of my channel is to give people hope, you know, that if Christabel, yeah. look at everything you've been through. After all you've been through, you've come out on the other side. Even though you had to relearn a few things, you know, it's been a slow journey, but you've come out on the other side with God with you all the time. So that's the message. So if you are watching this, you know, and you are scared, you are feeling frustrated and you feel hopeless, this is the time we need to dig deep into yeah. God's word, dig deeper and then get that connection with him, you know, get the reassurance from him because you can't do this on your own. We need, he's working with us every step of the way and he will definitely see us through and bring us out on the other side. So if Christabel can go through this, we all can go through this time as well. Thank you. I love everything you just said, like what you're trying to do with your channel and bringing light and hope because that's yeah. so needed and especially right now. Mm. And when you said hope, you know, my, my album that I put out two years ago is called Hope Survives. Oh, really? And it's an album. So tell about, us about that, Christabel. You, yeah. You're an award-winning songwriter as well after <laughs> yeah. everything you've been through. Yeah, so Hope Survives um, came out in 2017, and that was an album about my journey through, sorry, my nose keeps itching. <laughs> sorry. Um, that was my journey through brain injury, mm. about how this song the Lord gave me, with a little hope, you can make it through today. With a little faith, someday you'll get through the pain. Just a little love is enough to light the way through your darkest night, Hope Survives. Wow. And, you know, Jesus says, faith is small as a mustard seed, right? Yeah. We don't need yeah. a lot. We just need a little. But whatever little that we give to God, he can turn it into a lot. <laughs> he can so take true. it. But we have to give 
him something. Yeah. And we give him that offering of faith and that offering of worship and that offering of praise mm-hmm. and hope and prayer, he can take that no matter how little energy that you have. If you only have a little bit, that's enough. Yeah. And so it's been, yeah, that, that was a huge, huge message that the Lord started to give to me. And then yeah. I actually just released a brand new album last week called declaration Mm. and that one was actually about coming out of an abusive relationship okay so i was touring nationally i was doing 80 shows a year on the road and um that all came to a screeching halt when this abuser entered into my life and Mm manipulated me and assaulted me and it it put me in the darkest season of my entire life darker than the brain injury darker than anything else I guess in a different way I would say and I had just had another concussion right before I met him so my judgment was off I thought he seemed nice I didn't I didn't know somebody could just look you in the eye and lie to you (laughs) I I didn't understand that level of evil in the world. I didn't know that was real. Um, I'm not going to go into too many details, but I have a legal protection order now. Okay. uh, A federal order, the protection from abuse order, because I'm, I'm away from the danger. I'm safe at this point, but coming out of that, I felt so broken. Mm. I lost all hope and all these people were listening to my album and being like oh I love all your messages of hope and I'm feeling like I don't believe it anymore like Mm. I don't even know where God is I don't know where to find him I don't know what to do I I felt so alone I had PTSD I would have dreams I would wake up every day with anxiety I just couldn't function Mm -hmm. I just shut down completely And the Lord healed my heart. He put my heart back together and he reminded me of my worth in him. It took time. It took a a journey, but he taught me how to hope again. Mm. And that's kind of the theme of the new album. There's a song called Dare to Hope Again. Mm, Wow. How when you lose your hope, that it's never too late to choose it again over and over again, we can continually choose hope and we can choose to not give up. And it takes bravery to be hopeful, but God can give us the strength. I can do yeah. all things through Christ who strengthens me. Exactly. Yeah. And I've also learned that hope is not a feeling. Hope is a decision. Yes. That was a major shifting point. Mm-hmm. So um, it's, been, it's been tough. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. Like I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. No. Um, I'm in my mid twenties and I feel like I've lived a million lifetimes <laughs> just with like, you know, entering into dark seasons of struggle at a very young age. Um, yeah. but, but I wouldn't trade what God has, the intimacy that I found with the Lord, mm. you know, I, while I'm not thankful of what happened to me. Mm-hmm. I'm thankful that God, what the enemy intended for harm, God intended for good. And yeah, and it, I, I share my testimony. It's really hard to go public with something like that, but the Lord told me it was time. And so the Declaration album has songs about the abuse. There's a song called That's Not Love, which is about what love is and what love isn't mm. based on 1 Corinthians 13. And it you know, details a lot of the abuse that I went through. Mm -hmm. And I started getting, the song's only been out about a week and a half. And I started getting all these messages from women and comments on the music video on Facebook that had been through domestic violence, commenting about how much it spoke to them and that there's still hope. And I just have had tears streaming down my face and I'm thankful. Yes. I was going I was going to say you know your story is going to impact lots of women you know in a in a positive way because there are so many women going through that at the moment and they've lost hope and they're like how can they get out of this 
you know, but hearing your story and how you've been able to come out of it and seeing how strong you were throughout, that would encourage many women to say they can do it too. They don't have to stay there and tolerate that. Yeah. They don't have to take abuse from anyone. Yeah. You know, because God I didn't made... know I could walk away. Yeah. Like I after the first time I was like, I could have left. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that I could. Mm. I was just like he was spiritually abusive. Like he was a ordained pastor. Um he was really? a missionary. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And he was secretly married. Let's just start with that, with the level of deceit. Um, you know, he was, it was a classic case of narcissistic abuse, really. Mm. Um, but he was, he was evil. And I, I just, I didn't know that I could leave with the, when somebody is constantly manipulating you and telling you that if I ever heard anything different from God than he did, I was automatically wrong. Oh, but he, so he would be like, no, God said this, 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 this. He would send me Bible verses about how I needed to submit to him. Mm. He would use scripture to put me down and manipulate me and control me. And it was very damaging. And Every time I would start to feel like I should leave him, he would have some excuse or reason or some scriptural backing as to why I should never leave him. He said, if I ever left him, he'd kill himself. He said all these things, you know, he, um, I started to find out like these layers of deceit, all these things he lied to me about. Hmm. And it started to unfold but I still had this, they call it trauma bonding. So when somebody's abusive to you, you get trauma bonded to them. Mm -hmm. So through the abuse, Mm -hmm. you actually become more bonded to them because they, in in a narcissistic abuse situation, they will manipulate you and abuse you and put you down, but then Mm -hmm. they'll be the ones to build you back up. So it's like this cycle of they hurt you And then they are the ones who are your savior and heal you. And then they hurt you Mm -hmm. and then they heal you and then they hurt you and then they heal you over and over and over again to the point where you feel like you can't live without them because they get you into this manipulative cycle where you can't leave. And I wish that I knew and had the strength and I knew that I could leave and I wish I had that but when you have somebody so abusive, it's like he was constantly in my ear. So mm-hmm. I didn't have time to think for myself. Mm. Only when I had some time to myself was I actually able to go, wait a minute, this is wrong. These are all lies. Wow. And God, I started to be able to hear God for myself again. Yeah. But it took, it took being away from him to even start to hear that. But I, you know, I don't want anyone else to ever know, like, you can walk away. Yes. And you you don't have to stay in those cycles. And God is bigger. God is stronger. Did you talk to anyone about it or did you keep it all to yourself? Oh, I I eventually talked to some, I talked to my mom. Um, But during while it was happening, I was trying to pretend like it was okay. And that's a common thread through people who are in abusive relationships, they paint this picture that it's this happy relationship. They don't want anyone to question it because they're trying to convince themselves. Mm. The whole time I was trying to convince myself that it was fine. And, but I knew it was wrong, but he was, he had all these spiritual reasons for why he would abuse me. So he would be like, well, God told me to do that so that you'd be more humble or God, you know, really ludicrous and it sounds ridiculous now but when you're in it like your self-esteem is so damaged so low yes that you believe it you believe you deserve it Mm. (laughs) you believe that you know and he he made himself a spiritual authority over me so he'd be like you know god god said that i had to do this to you and so that you didn't have an idol anymore 
for that terrible. It's awful. Yeah, but sadly, it's the reality of a lot of women. And on my podcast, I've actually been interviewing women who are survivors of domestic violence Mm. because it's something I'm very passionate about and I want to help bring more awareness to. And women's ministry has become huge on my heart, more so than before I went through the abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to do ministry, but it wasn't until after coming out of this and healing through this and that that my heart for women really has grown. And in knowing our worth in Christ, we're daughters of the King. Yeah. Like, nobody should ever treat you that way. And if yeah. they do, you can leave and walk away. You don't have to say an abuse. You don't no matter what stay. they say. Yes. Yes. I'm glad you've you know you've said this because so many young girls out there in relationships, you know, hearing your story would say, "Oh, that rings a bell. I heard that." You know. So that's not right. So they would know what's right and they, they can make a choice for themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, they can know the difference between what's right and what's wrong. You know, because as young girls, sometimes so. they're not sure, is this right? Is this wrong? And they stay in there because they feel, oh, maybe it's just normal or maybe it will soon pass, it will soon go, you know, yeah. and it will only be for a short time. So how You keep thinking it's going to get better. Yeah. Sorry? You keep thinking it's going to get better. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe they ask for forgiveness. And you say, okay, well, he's sorry. You know? Yeah. They cry. He cried. (laughs) He would cry all the time. I'm so sorry. You know? But now you're out of that and you're in a good place now, right? I am. I am away from the danger. I have a legal protection order. So if he tries to talk to me or come near me I'm supposed to call the police he could go to jail for doing it because that's how serious it was there was the federal judge that ruled in my favor for to have a no contact order um Mm -hmm. but you know it's I'm in a I'm in a new season of healing and of growth and new depths of God that I never knew were there. You know, he's deeper, the well that never runs dry, Mm -hmm. deeper and deeper and new music and praising him. And, and I, I'm in a, you know, I'm in a totally different place. And if there's one message that I, I would share through all of this, it's if you've gone through the darkness, God's with you in the darkness but he can take you into the light. Yes. And it's never too late to try again. No. You have never made too many mistakes. God is with you. He walks with you through the valley. You know, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you're with me. You comfort yes. me. Psalm 23. Yes. And if you're feeling like you're in a dark season right now, hold on. It's okay to feel. Don't pretend like, don't pretend like you're okay. Mm -hmm. But healing is painful. Healing is uncomfortable. Now I have joy. (laughs) You know, you see me in these smile, like I'm I'm always smiling because I just love God. And Mm -hmm. I know who I am in Christ. And I know my worth. And I know that God has brought me through all of this. And he has given me joy. Joy is the fruit of the spirit. You don't get it outside of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And he's brought me here. But healing hurts. And if you feel uncomfortable, if, if God's digging into those vulnerable places, I used to be afraid to pray because it hurt too much. Oh. So like, I never wanted to pray because when I would start to pray, God would start to go into my layers and I'd be like, oh no, no I'd rather keep the walls up. There. Thank you. <laughs> and, but I realized that, you know, the vulnerability of letting God into your layers letting him go deeper into you. It hurts. It's painful, it is. but it doesn't hurt more than staying there. True. Staying there hurts True. more. Yes. And so, but you have to feel it and you have to let yourself grieve and you have to let yourself feel the pain mm-hmm. in order to move past it. To walk, yeah, just, walk through it. Yeah. You can't just be like, okay, I'm not going to be sad anymore. And, and just, you know, cause there'll be, there's still times that I have dreams that are, I dream he's attacking me or whatever. Like I'll have these dreams and, you know, 
there's still, it, it's, a, it's a process. Healing is a continual process, but Jesus is our healer yeah. and, and he heals us through it. So yeah, it might hurt, but it's never too late and you've never fallen too far and you can continue to choose hope over and over and over again. It's God is the God of second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth of the chances. <laughs> you know, <don't> <laughs> yes, so true. Wow, I've been blessed by your testimony and I'm glad you came on to share it with us today. You know, so what advice would you give to someone who may be going through something similar, maybe in terms of um, domestic violence or somebody who is just in a difficult place at the moment and they feel, oh, you know, they will never get out of this. So what advice would you give? And I know we've, we've spoke, said so much about it already, but. Yeah. Yeah. You know, outside of putting your faith in God and letting God heal you, you have to find uh, somebody to talk to, whether it's a therapist or a close friend, a sister in Christ, a, you know, spouse or somebody in your life. Like for me, it was my mom, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody that you can be vulnerable with and have the hard conversations. My mom always says she asks the hard questions. My mom asks the hard questions and she helped me dig deep and the yeah. things I didn't want to talk about that were painful to talk about, she would ask me about and be patient and kind and, and help walk me through it. You have to have somebody in your life that you can talk to yeah. because it it's that's one of the main ways like bringing it to the light you know so, so that's probably my biggest advice okay because many times when going through stuff the you know you tend to feel you are the only one oh i'm the only one going through this but when you talk to other people then you see there are so many other people going through that and when you talk to someone that's you know going to get you through to the other side you know you might feel the pain but the healing takes place while you feel the pain there's a yeah. process you know it's a process oh it's been so nice having you on Pista Bill yeah I'm so glad we were able to get connected and I really appreciate you having me on uh, I have to so get you on my podcast too. Yes, it'd be nice to come on your podcast. I would love, love to do to that. I would love yeah. to do that. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like us to know about you or before you leave? Oh gosh. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Just thank you for listening. Uh, all my music's available online. I do have a book called More to Me. It's a devotional about okay. finding your freedom through your identity in Christ. It's available on Amazon. Right and um yeah just continue to trust god you know he's with you you're not alone and yeah. no matter what dark season you're going through god can walk with you through it all mm -hmm. what's your podcast called it's called declaration life okay do you have a youtube channel I do. Yes. It's youtube.com slash Christabel Braden. <laughs> all right. So please do follow Christabel, you know, like, subscribe and all of that. That would be great. I will be subscribing to your channel as well. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. It's been nice having you on Christabel and I'm sure lots of lives will be impacted by your story. So no matter what is happening, everyone, like we said earlier, God is good. Hang in there. He's going to see every one of us through. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So do have a good day, Christabel. Thank you. All right, then. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for having me, too. And um, wait, are you stopping recording or are you hanging up? No, I'm still recording. Oh, okay. No, I was asking if you were just going to stop the recording or if you were hanging up. Oh, okay, I'll stop the recording, yeah. <laughs>